people don't know, they don't know the stories about Jessamine County. I mean, they, they, they've got this whole couch surfing culture. The kids don't have access to a place anymore. I think we've got about 10 students now who are homeless. Some have been in trouble with the law. Some of most come from broken homes, um, single parent families or living with grandparents. Most of them come from places where they've had to learn how to manipulate to survive. And when you come out of a hard environment, you're, you're really good at taking care of you because no one else is. And getting them to school, smell like cat pee because that's where their clothes run a floor. And we, you know, so there's a lot of need here. There's a lot of need here. That's why we. That's why we're all here. Lou came down. Um, he was really proud of his powder blue velour jumpsuit or sweatsuit or his hip hop thing, and he had the chain that went with it and and the whole nine yards. And he came down to Archie. He was serious. He was serious. He was, he was the man. He was tough. There was something to do. I didn't have much to do at home, so something to do to keep me in town. And so I um, went down and done it, and I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I did. Lou was one of those that I really had a sense focus on this kid. And so he started, he started doing archery, and he, and he was good at it. He was really good at it. I don't know how to explain it. It's a, I guess it's kind of like an art form. It's just, I don't know, it's free-flowing. I like it. It teaches leadership, it teaches teamwork, um, it teaches determination, um, and it gets you really set in the ways of, you know, you want, when you do something, you want to do it right. The stance is, is biblically our foundation. You know, we have our spiritual foundation, we have our, our social and psychological foundation, we have our, our, our relational foundations. In archery, everything is built on that stance. And, and what happens is when the kids are out of balance, just like when we're out of balance in our life, they can be easily knocked off track. When they don't have their feet set and, and their core muscles centered over just right and their weight slightly forward on the front of their feet, then any little bump will knock them off their task and off their goal. The body's gotta be squared toward the target. So, you know that the kids not, if they're not looking at what they're aiming at, and if their body's not pointing towards what they're aiming at, they're not going to hit what they're aiming at. And so, and then I make that, that case all the time that in education, if you're here and you're not looking at an education, then you're not going to get an education. You might get a piece of paper, but you're not going to get your goal. You're not going to hit your bullseye. So that's, that's the trunk. Archery, the bow, they have to have a firm grip on the bow, but you can't grip it too tight. And because when you grip it too tight, you're afraid to let go, um, and all your focus is on not losing something. And that's why the kids grip the bow, they're afraid to drop it. But when they're doing it, it shakes them all over the place and it causes their arrows to go off course. So the lesson for that is, is that they have to be firm and solid and they have to have a good grip on what they're accomplishing, but they also have to be open. To, to what's going to happen and let life take its natural course. When they hit the target, they, they have a moment. I tell them, I'll, you, have, you have a brief moment of formative assessment. I want them to, to see what was wrong and, and, and look and say, okay, I can do better this time. I want them to think about the things that they could have done differently in their stance or in their release or all that stuff. And, and then I'll, I want them to do it over again. And that's the great thing about archery, is it's a big do-over. I mean, just the practices all around, it was a fun environment. It was real home-like. I liked it. So I'd say, yeah, without archery, I would... It probably took me a lot longer to get into the groove of school. His life in Highbridge revolved around a place that we've talked about. You know, a place of, of need. It's kind of a hurt, cold place. Um, and then he saw archery as a vehicle, or a vehicle to hope. And so he hung on. You know, and that's smart kids do. They find something that's good and it gives them some hope and gives them some meaning. And he hung on to it with everything he had. And that ended up in him and the team making it to the world tournament. And then the 
last day, I had promised the kids to see the ocean. Yeah, no, when we went to the ocean, it was the, uh, it was the first time I'd ever actually seen the ocean. I'd never been before. So uh, he's playing down the ocean. Man, no big deal, the ocean, who cares? I'm just gonna sit and chill a few hours on the beach, you know, check out the lady. That's what I'm gonna do. I didn't, I said I wasn't gonna get in. Uh, I was determined not to get in there. I don't like fish. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm like, Lou, you sure you don't want it? Lou. And he is already gone. So maybe a, a half a second and I was running towards the water. They were running and screaming through the surf like some kind of movie. They're going, woohoo, and falling down in the water. And and they start they start playing and, and running and acting like kids. And this will be hard for me because we were sitting there and, and uh, I realized that's what I wanted. I wanted them to have a chance to be a kid for an hour. They got to be like everybody else. They got to play, they got to go to the ocean, they got to be special. They got to experience everything that they didn't get. And that's what our tree did. It was fun. It was. It was a blast.